Sup everyone, Edwin here. Question, Starlink Mini or Starlink Standard? Let's talk about it. Starlink took its sweet time officially launching in Zimbabwe and now that it has, there is a raging debate on which one to get, the $350 standard kit or the $200 mini. There is a range of Starlink products, some for boats even, but I'll focus on the mini and the standard kits in this video. So let's get cracking. We can simply look at it from a price point perspective. The Mini will set you back 200 bucks for the kit and 33 bucks for the monthly subs, whilst the standard kit reaches a bit deeper into your wallet at $350 for the kit and $50 for the monthly subs. Surely this price difference on both the kit and the subs must mean something, right? Starlink Mini is an integrated kit, meaning that the antenna and the Wi-Fi router are all baked into one unit. There is no external router nor the option to connect to one. The best you can do if you want to extend your Wi-Fi range, which most peeps will need, is to get the Starlink mesh nodes. Starlink is quite specific about this and is clear in mentioning that third-party mesh routers will not work with Starlink. Standard Starlink will come with a bigger antenna and a separate third gen router that also prefers the use of Starlink mesh nodes or routers to expand the network. You can connect third party switches to the standard kit but there are some nerdy caveats like having to put the router into a bypass mode and having to contend with the bypassed port only providing one IP address. I won't bore you with those specifics. That said, if you live in a small place or you're moving around a lot, then the Mini will do just fine. But if you have a big house or even a multi-story one, you'll need to get the standard kit. The Mini is rated at 112 square meters of Wi-Fi range and the standard is over double that at 294 square meters. The standard kit also comes with better networking features than the Mini, Wi-Fi 6 versus Wi-Fi 5, and support for 235 devices via the Gen 3 router versus 128 devices on the integrated router in the Mini. Oh, and since the standard kit comes with a separate router, you also get two Ethernet ports whilst the Mini goes completely portless. Let's look at speed! You will probably be getting the same rapid speeds on both the Mini and the standard kits. That's over 100 megs download speeds and between 20 and 50 megs upload speeds. However, the Mini kits will not get priority access. This means if Starlink network starts to face congestion, those using Mini will feel it first as the network prioritizes those on the standard kits. Oh, and a friendly warning to all my pirates! Unlike all the ISPs you're used to, Starlink actually polices torrents and the like big time, and will not hesitate to suspend their service to you if they detect torrent traffic on your Starlink account. Mozodanduone. Connection stability is another, and this is just because of physics, really. The antenna on the Mini is more compact than the standard kit's antenna. Great for mobility, but could be a point of weakness when there is bad weather. The standard kit has bigger and more powerful antenna, meaning it can endure harsher weather conditions than the Mini before it loses signal. Since we're on the topic of power, the Mini grabs some brownie points here. 60 watts power consumption rating versus 100 watts for the standard kit. The Mini can even be powered off a USB-C power bank as long as the power bank is rated at no less than 100 watts, an option that the standard kit doesn't have. Just to put things into perspective, your regular fiber or ADSL router uses at most 20 watts of power. So if you are coming from those setups and are running a solar system, expect Starlink to be a bit more thirsty than your current router. But if you have an LTE system with an outdoor unit, then you won't really see the difference. Those are in the same sort of power consumption range as both Starlink kits. One feature on Starlink that consumes the most power is the built-in snow melting system. We definitely won't be needing that in Zimbabwe, which means that the power consumption is going to be lower for us. Where I am envious with the Mini is that it comes with a standard pipe adapter right there in the box. And you can use this to mount the kit onto a 2 inch diameter pole. The standard kit only gives you a kickstand and calls it a day. If you feel the need for one, which I know I certainly do, it will set you back a further $84 and it won't even include the pipe. 
So, which one should you get? Well, Starlink actually has a nice way of summing it up. Starlink Mini is compact in size, portable, and recommended for basic internet applications. Starlink Standard is recommended for high-demand everyday internet applications. Based on that, you should have a clear idea of which one to get, unless the wallet owns the decision-making. In case you are wondering, I ordered the Standard Kit, which I am seriously excited about. The estimated delivery date is Friday the 20th, and I'll be going through the whole process of setting it up from collecting the box to uploading my video of setting it up using Starlink. <laughs> so be sure to get subscribed for that. Also, send me all the questions you've got on Starlink in the comments, and I'll do the heavy lifting for you so you don't have to. Catch you in the next one.